Welcome to the Fund Your Retirement Podcast. We get it up on the screen, but there's big TVs in the office, and we get it up on the screen and we show people visually what their future looks like financially. Right. And normally, touch wood, it's really positive. And so people can retire earlier, they can spend more, they can save less now and enjoy more holidays, or, yeah. or they can just sleep at night, kind of knowing that. Peace of work, mind. Yeah, it's so mm. important, so valuable that. So, so yeah, that's um, that's where it starts. And actually, even when it's not good, even when I, you know there's red in the plan, which shows you running out of money or whatever, kind of, at least you know. I, yeah. And that's... Make adjustments. That's my, that is my view. I hate not knowing. I hate yeah. being, you know, I love plans. I love being, I say I love being organised. Like my wife would laugh her head off at that. But I like to, especially when I'm embarking on a project or something, I need to yeah. have control over it. Um, and that's what this gives you. It says, well, actually, you have the choice now. It's not me. I'm not, you know, the numbers are the numbers. And, and this is the truth of it. There's another system called truth, and it's got the best name because it is. It's the truth. It's the reality, of, uh, yeah. Yeah, and... Yeah. You want to retire there, and right, you've got to save this, uh, or you've got to take this amount of additional risk, or you've got to work a bit longer, or spend less, or go on less holidays, or whatever <laughs> it is. You know, basically, it's helping somebody make those decisions, isn't it? With a yeah. with an ob- with a, a goal, clear goal in mind, a clear objective. Yes, and um, knowing how each of those decisions affect all of the other ones, it's great. And I and like I say, I, I am passionate about it because. Um, it does it we see it in people's standard of living stress levels all of those things kind of when they know it's all good yeah they they can just breathe easy which is awesome hello and welcome back to the fund your retirement podcast i'm lee please be the co-founder of fund your retirement welcome you back to your weekly insights from our expert guests in finance, business, and wealth building strategies, helping you fund your retirement. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Dominic McLaughlin, Charter Financial Planner and Director at Beckett's Wealth Management Services. Dominic is very passionate about his job and the role he provides for his clients, as you'll see through this interview. Dominic believes in having the right financial plan, but equally having the right wealth engine to drive that plan. They are two sides of the same coin, as Dominic shares in this interview. Dominic shares his passion, knowledge and insights from helping people achieve the goal of funding their retirement over his 15 year career. Hello, Dominic. Thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate coming on the show. Thank you, Lee. First time on a podcast, so uh, a little bit nervous, but thank you very much. Is it really? Is it your first time on a podcast? I've, I've listened to... I want to say thousands, but at least hundreds of podcasts. Yeah. Uh, but yes, definitely my first time being interviewed. Well, that's all. Well, I'm honoured. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no thank worries you. at all. Thank you for agreeing to come on the show. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's brilliant that, that you've agreed to come on. And uh, one of the things that I want to mention is you've just become a finalist in the Red Rose Awards as well. So congratulations on that. That's absolutely great news. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we only found out uh, maybe a couple of days ago. Uh, so, so yeah, really positive for the whole team. Really, it's a team effort over here. So, mm. uh, everybody deserves the the credit. Yeah, yeah. And what's involved in uh, you know you got to the finalists? What's involved in actually winning the award then? Uh, well, the next stage is uh, judges interviews. Um, mm. So we've got those in I think two weeks time, and that's really where kind of they they turn the heat up a little bit and um, get under the uh, the bonnet of you know our our assessment. Really get the microscope out type thing. Yeah, exactly. That's when you get your sweat on when you're kind of being questioned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so yeah, we've done we've done a few of these awards, but it's the first time we've entered the Red Rose Awards, and they're a, they're a great one. You know, it's across Lancashire. Yeah. And we're, we're proud to be, you know, Lancastrians and a, a Lancashire business. So fingers crossed we do well. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned that like awards are actually quite important to you as your business because it's an outside barometer of um, how well you're, you're kind of doing, isn't it? So it's a uh, it'd be... it's That's a brilliant way of putting it, really. So we've we've got a goal to be the best small financial planning practice in the country. That's our kind of big, hairy, audacious goal that we've set. Yeah. Um and when we talked about about that, we, we were we were discussing well, how on earth can you prove you are? You know, yeah, what, yeah, it's good. You know, what 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 what's measurable? Um, and you so, got your own feedback from your own clients, haven't you? Which yeah, is obviously you, extremely beneficial. That's it. 
that's probably the most, you know, for us, that's the most important. It's, you know, client retention, it's client satisfaction surveys and making sure that they are, you know, absolutely exceptional. Yeah. Um, and then you've got your financial metrics, which we've got our own objectives for that. And again, you know, profitable businesses stay in business. And so that's another one. But how do you assess yourself against other firms, you know, yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah, both in the industry and outside, and and we decided that actually uh, peer review kind of within awards is is probably one of the best ways to do that. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you. It's a great way because they're they're going to be comparing you against multiple different firms, including other financial advisory firms. So it's a fantastic. Exactly. Way. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Um, before we get really into the nuts and bolts of financial planning, and I do like the guests to share a little bit about their journey, their story, and how how they came to where they are today. So. If you don't mind sharing a little bit about your backstory and your journey, that'd be fantastic. So it'd be interesting because this is your first podcast as well. So yeah, uh, it's the first time you've kind of broadcasted it to the um, internet. The, to the whole internet. The, yeah. yeah, everybody out there. Yeah, it's kind of nerve-wracking on that way. So Yeah, um, sorry, just, I just put you on a pedestal there, haven't I? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> just, just edit out basically all my I'll waffle. cut that bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I think a lot of people probably say the same thing they were kind of either fell into financial planning or were dragged into it mine was the latter of the two I was I was dragged into it definitely but uh my mother is uh, a chartered accountant and and Mm -hmm. had a chartered accountant's practice and my father uh, was a solicitor and had his own practice and so back in the mid 90s um they were approached um by someone they passed a lot of work to and 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 created a financial advice business um oh, right. uh kind of combining you know the the three disciplines really um and and that did really well for you know almost 10 years i'd say um up until around about 2006 when there was essentially a split in the business not the the uh, most uh, positive of splits and so November 2006 my mother strongly requested is probably the best way of putting it that I yeah. join uh, <laughs> I join Beckett's um, and I always said to her she she asked me to do you know different things in the business but I'd always said no I would if I if I ever was going to do something like that I want to go elsewhere and kind of Mm. cut my teeth and learn my trade, et cetera. Um, But ultimately when my mum asked in the way she did and and kind of needed my help, there's no, there's no real choice then. So, uh, so yeah, so I joined Beckett's and we were just a shell really. It was, Mm. it was uh, a very difficult time and um, probably good for me because I was so naive to it all. I didn't even realize what a difficult journey was ahead and and, right. and what a tough uh, position the business was in so um so yeah I just jumped into it two-footed and ran through my exams as quickly as possible mm. um and just tried to get a handle on on what it was all about really mm. and it, it you know fast forward what 15 15 16 years later kind of mum knows best because I'm sat here with a massive smile on my face yeah, absolutely yeah. you know can't imagine a better career and, and a better job and um yeah. and yeah I'm just just really proud of what we've achieved over that time yeah and it's uh I presume you find it highly rewarding as well working with the clients and seeing the results of that 15 years of work really that you can now actually look back on and think yeah actually Thanks, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, for... It's 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 not even you know it's it's all of the things. It's, it's the clients that we work with in kind of you know the position that we've been able to help put them in, mm. um, you know, or just even the guidance that has helped them achieve their goals. That's amazing. But then looking at the careers that um, have been created through the business and the yeah. team that we've got, it's yeah. it's not just a job; it is a career for a lot of people. And so you know, when I think about their families and the houses that they can buy and the mortgages and and even we've even had like work experience people who've come in who've then gone on oh to brilliant go, yeah that's special isn't it yeah you know, you've inspired them exactly so, yeah and no, they come yeah. back and they still still ask for come back and ask for advice and you know it's it's just absolutely it's i i, I think it's a massively under appreciated career that is available to a yeah. lot of people uh and and you know, obviously, my mum was 
an accountant and my dad was a solicitor and you know both of those are really admirable admirable professions yeah I agree. um but our kind of constant touch points with clients and you know holistic kind of wide-ranging way of of looking at everything that's going on um it just it really embeds you in people's lives and yeah. for a for a nosy person like myself that's, <laughs> that's brilliant so it's great I can also tell you know how passionate you are about it. You you really are. You can just tell it's oozing from you how much you love it, and you know it's fantastic to see as well. And hopefully the audience can see, you know, this is somebody who really enjoys what they do and delivering. The we're not fil- we're not filming this, are we? They can't see my big the, hooter. Yeah, this is going oh, no. on, this is going on YouTube as well. Uh, okay, all right. I should have. <laughs> I should have brushed my hair this morning. Should have just, okay. Yeah, no, your hair looks yeah. good. <laughs> um, one of the questions, one of the things you did mention in the early conversation, though, which I'm quite interested in, Dominic, was you said that um, you've noticed um, over the last 18 months quite a significant increase in people asking for a financial plan, which is quite surprising, really, isn't it? Because you've been in the industry a long time, 2006, you mentioned. You said that really in the last 18 months to two years you've only really started noticing people come to you and say hey Dominic I, I need a plan I need I need a financial plan you know why why do you think that is what what do you think's been the shift in the last 18 months two years for that to come about well I think um I think historically maybe people are understanding financial planning a bit more so we used to be a financial advice firm. We're definitely a financial planning firm now. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, it's, it's industry jargon, isn't it? But it, it, it's the planning, which is the main focus on that. And so maybe there's some marketing and other things that have gone out that kind of position that in people's minds in a different way. Mm, yeah. But the, the big driver over the last couple of years for me and experience and seeing things has been lockdown has been the global pandemic has been people's kind of, um appreciation of time at home um appreciation of spending time with their families and and also understanding this work-life balance in a in a greater Mm. way and i think people instead of coming on to us with you know is my pension performing are my investments performing how do i save inheritance tax um they're kind of coming at us with uh, how do i get here you know how do i you know, how do I extricate myself from work? How do I, you know, um, what do I need to, to, to build up? You know, how much do I need to sell my business for? Anything like that. Mm. Um, it's a much wider position. Um, and I do think that, um, you know, COVID and the, the mindset shift is, is a major factor in that. Yeah. So do you think there's been a lot of introspective then going on over the last two years where people are now been sat at home with all this time going, hmm, where am I heading? What am what direction am I going in? Yeah, hugely. I think I think it's so easy to you know to be in the rat race if you want to call it that, or just be on the treadmill of kind of get up, go to work, you know, yeah. uh, you know, eat, sleep, repeat. So I think that that kind of break of that system definitely made people consider what matters most to them more, um, yeah. which is you know amazing for yeah, us as a business but also for them as people because yeah. you know having to knowing that a financial plan is going to give somebody clarity and kind of confidence and all of this kind of self-belief and all of these things that make their life better having to kind of sell it to people in the past when when you know they were coming in and saying right no i just want you to look at you know this investment for me and i'm yeah. saying well just look at this pension type thing for me yeah or, yeah cool. how's the pension doing so yeah, of course I can do that. But actually, look at this. Look at how yeah. how how much how good this is. And yeah. um, and now it's kind of you know it's still it's still what it was, but it's it's a much more of actually I want that. And especially when we show people what a financial plan is, you know, you see people. Please share of, share share some some of the insights of what a financial plan is then with the audience. You know, if anyone's listening to here, just you know, please share share with them. Okay, so uh, so it's. It, all it should be is a simple, clear, easy to understand picture of your future, your fi- of how your finances are going to support the rest of your life, of, of the things that you want to do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, 
I'll plug it. We use we use Voyant Go. It's uh, I've I've looked at all of the cash flow um, forecasting software. Voyant Go by far is the be- is the best as, as as far as I'm concerned. It yeah. you know, it partners with Voyant. We get it up on the screen. We've got these big TVs in the office, and we get it up on the screen, and we show people visually what their future looks like financially. Right. And normally, touch wood. It's really positive. And so people can retire earlier, they can spend more, they can save less now and enjoy more holidays, or yeah. or they can just sleep at night, kind of knowing that peace of work, mind. Yeah, it's so mm. important, so valuable that. So so yeah, that's um that's where it starts. And actually, even when it's not good, even when I, you know there's red in the plan, which shows you running out of money or whatever, kind of at least you know. Yeah. And that's make adjustments. That's my, that is my view. I hate not knowing. I hate being, yeah. you know, I love plans. I love being, I say I love being organized. I'm my wife would laugh her head off at that. But I like to, especially when I'm embarking on a project or something, I need to yeah. have control over it. Um, and that's what this gives you. It says, well, actually, you have the choice now. It's not me. I'm not, you know, the numbers are the numbers. And, and this is the truth of it. There's another system called truth and it's got the best name because it is, it's the truth. It's the reality, on, uh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. You want to retire there, and right, you've got to save this, uh, or you've got to take this amount of additional risk, or you've got to work a bit longer, or spend less, or go on less holidays, or whatever <laughs> it is. You know, basically, it's helping somebody make those decisions, isn't it? With a yeah. with an ob- with a, a goal, clear goal in mind, a clear objective. Yes, and um, knowing how each of those decisions affect all of the other ones, it's great. And I and like I say, I, I am passionate about it because. Um, it does. It we see it in people's standard of living, stress levels, all of those things. Kind of when they know it's all good, yeah. They they can just breathe easy, which is awesome. Yeah, and one of the things that's coming into my mind as you're describing this is like a, a, a plan for the financial side of it. You know, it's like it's like building a house, isn't it? Or planning to go on holiday. There's a lot of there's the foundations, there's the research, there's the there's the there's the analysis on the internet of you know planes, yeah. holidays, destinations, hotels, or even when you're building the property, who builders coming in, the prices of those builders. Yeah. Well, each sort of way is a cost, isn't it? Uh, and you make those decisions. So people spend. It's not a foreign concept, is it? People spend a lot of time planning. Yes. Yeah other areas of the lives but yeah perhaps people need to also make that crossover to hey we also need to plan for our uh, retirement as well i think people are just a bit scary you know they're a bit scared of like actually doing scared it. Of, yeah do you think they're scared of what the answer might be 100 percent. yeah that, yeah i just thinking that myself there they're scared of what the answer might be well actually most most people think they're in a worse position than they are uh, what's your uh, experience do you find that actually when you work out with people, they're better off than they think they are. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, you know, who knows? Maybe it's the types of clients we deal with, or, or whatever. Course, yeah. um, but I would say, you know, seventy thirty in terms of people being in a much better position than they right. expect. That, that um, much better seventy thirty. Yeah, kind of. That's that's the the swing on it, and and that's that's why it's great. The thirty percent of the time, it's more difficult, but seventy percent of the time, it's absolutely <laughs> winner. So yeah. Well, I guess the thirty percent of the time, that's where you work on other areas for with them, where you can maybe, I'm guessing, you help yeah. them um, saving, uh, budgeting, maybe. Look, you can't go on your holidays. Yeah. You know, you don't want to say those types well, of things. It, but I'm presuming say, that they're the conversations that come up. It's it's much less that, and that's what people always think. You know, even friends that I've advised, they all you know a couple of years after being advising with them they're like i just thought you're going to tell me to stop spending money and stop doing <laughs> stuff and i'm like right. hell no yeah do, yeah do the stuff you want to do but make sure you spend the money on what you really want to do so yeah. you know sometimes if there is like a need for a bit of budgeting then that that is maybe a part of it kind of align your spending with your values of what you really care about don't waste it on starbucks and you know things like that although i yeah. do love a starbucks so i'm i'm a i'm, Cost, you know, I'm a customer on me Oh, oh really? Sorry, I'm a costa man. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, I can preach it, but I don't always do it. That's my yeah. problem. But yeah. um, but no, when you have those things, it's much more a case of people having the wrong risk position or the mm. wrong, um, you know, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, the tax, the, you know, they're saving, but not in the most tax efficient way. And actually, it's much more that than actually really, really focused on budgeting in most circumstances. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, I've heard uh, someone mention as well, just a simple 
change of their risk, risk profile can make a significant um, adjustment to the, the the pot at the end of the absolutely well. massive you know just so, so a, a very simple one you know and this is not advice uh but no absolutely not uh you know young people who start on their pensions don't go in your default fund if you're young you need to be investing at a high degree of risk mm. uh and so you the growth option the adventurous option it should be within um a pension structure company pension structure the default option for people under x age uh, but it's not always that case and and that that one thing can make an enormous difference um, yeah. to to you you know your retirement because company pensions will always be the first place to save for retirement yeah well that's a good insight just in itself company pensions yeah. straight away you know we've covered the financial plan there pretty pretty well in detail i, I would say uh, I know that you as a company and yourself, you are also quite uh, focused on the wealth management side of things. So mm-hmm. I wonder if you'd like to share a little bit about how you approach the wealth management side of the business as well, your philosophy, your approach. Yeah, so we're, we are, uh, we call ourselves a financial planning led wealth management company. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it, we are led by our financial planning, but we don't stop there. We really, really, you know, I've come from wealth management background in terms of building the investment proposition here. Um, mm-hmm. James, my co-director, has come from a wealth management background in terms of his previous business and then um, the discretionary management business that he, he, he sat in. Um, and we truly believe that there's a huge amount of value in high quality wealth management. Um, and actually, I think the profession is moving away from that, almost like, oh, Investments can be commoditized and you can just plug into a system and Bosch, it's done for you. But it's not just about the performance. It's about being close to your clients' investments and understanding mm-hmm. them in detail. Um, you know, for, for us, kind of, we feel us see ourselves as kind of guardians of our clients' wealth. You know, it's not just making X amount of percentage profit, it's but it's protecting and growing. And, and the best way to do that is is common sense is is what leads our investment approach diversification is key be paid for every kind of unit of risk that you're taking um and and package all of that together and quality doesn't mean complexity kind of you can build a really quality investment solution without being overly complex yeah and what that means is that when our clients pick the phone up to us and, you know, Russia's just invaded Ukraine, kind of, we've already screened the portfolio for Russian holdings. We already know what actions we're going to take, which is probably nothing. Just sit tight, you know. The so you, you're doing this in your office there in Lancashire yourself? Yeah, or right. we're doing this ourselves in, in the own office. We've got external consultants who sit on our investment committee. And so whenever there's a time of stress, we'll have kind of emergency meetings and we'll go through those things with them. Yeah. Um, you know, the Russian one's <laughs> a good example. You know, you could you could see Russia, um, you know, on the borders of Ukraine for weeks, you know, uh, if yeah. not months. And so we were doing analysis of, you know, previous wartime events and, you know, how have markets reacted, just so our clients know that we're considering this stuff and we're yeah. not... You're not going to pick the phone up to us and we're going to say, oh, I'll just check with somebody else. We're going to answer you there and then. Yeah. Um, so you, think- you and your team are running scenarios when that when that build up was going on, you and your team are running scenarios of for the yeah. portfolios that you were managing. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And that, and it's and it's you know, it's just having those discussions by having your kind of wealth management in a house. If you've got the quality to be able to do it and the, you know, the competency, we've got, you know, multiple CFA charter holders on the investment committee. So it's a seriously quality solution but um but by having that closeness to the investments it means our clients have confidence in what we're saying Mm -hmm. and it means that it allows them to not make bad decisions when things go wrong so covid a great example we look after 412 client families one 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 client of ours kind of sold out to cash and, and i spent three hours on the phone with them um trying to talk them off the ledge, but yeah. I couldn't, you know, and it's my yeah. client as well. So like more, more, more for me, but what that showed me is that, well, actually 411, you know, didn't. And mm. most of those weren't even calling us. It was us calling them out because they've been educated about the situation. They know it's under control. They know it's proactive. Um, so yeah, I just believe that closeness to managing money um, makes clients make better investment decisions. Um, yeah. And it's not the most, 
uh, agreed view in the in the financial planning community, but it's, it's it's our view and it's served us well. What do you mean by that? Then it's not the most agreed view. Is that because to, to, to some believe a, a separation? I think so. Yeah, and, and I, right. I can understand the argument there. Um, you know, I think a separation away from uh, managing assets is is a is a way certain planners go. You know, we we do the planning. We don't do the we don't do the investment management, mm. and you know the markets will take care of themselves, or or just buy the indexes, and you know, and this. But um, my personal view is that our our ability to have a true understanding because we buy the indexes at times and and buy active management at other times i think our you know true understanding of what's going on with your money just means that you're less likely to make a bad decision yeah. um such as selling when markets are down and mm. and that is is probably the biggest value add yeah. that uh you know a financial planner or advisor can have because that's when you can really decimate your long-term kind of wealth by making bad decisions. Like coming out into cash. Coming out into cash, you know. At the wrong time. and Yeah, jumping into like a too high-risk portfolio, again, usually at the wrong time when markets have been flying yeah. ahead. But, but whatever it is, it's just that closeness to your investments, which allows us to kind of guide our clients in the, in the, yeah. in the best way. I think that's where uh, the online YouTube in particular has has probably been real advantageous in enlightening people's understanding of the markets and finances, but equally you can end up going down a rabbit hole, can't you? And, and, and a pretty dark place if you go down the wrong track of um, buy gold, the whole world's going to end sort of. You can, I can't, you, you can end up down that track, can't you? Yeah, I can't. And it, I can't. I can't even get into that. Like for me, no. uh, YouTube experts with no comeback, no regulation behind them, you know, quite often selling. And this is the difficulty is you don't always see whether they're just selling something, whether it's a course or whether it's a, an affiliate link to mm. FX trading or gold trading or whatever, kind of that whole um, industry that has popped up. It, it kind of sickens me a little bit because people get taken in with it and, and our clients point us towards you know x person doing this or x person yeah. doing that but really it's it's youtube views and they're trying to make money yeah there are there are some great great um you know resources out there yeah. but um there's so much in financial planning and wealth management that interacts with each each other part yeah. that you can go and get a piece of advice from one article and think that's you know that makes perfect sense or that makes perfect yeah. sense we you know we had a client who who had who'd done a load of pension work with us you know 1.5 million pounds of the pensions approximately and we we do everything for her all looking great next thing you know went out and and saw something online that said you can still pay into your pension even after you stop working 2880 pounds right Pop 2,880 pounds in, grossed it up to 3,600, which is great for a lot of people. Um, You know, came to see me three months later at, uh, you know, a quarterly review, told me it happened. And I thought it was like an April Fool's kind of thing. I was like, surely you've not. I said, tell me before you do anything. Why have you not? And it was like, well, it said online you could. And basically that just that took away um, her her protection that she had on her pension, probably cost her in the region of 50, 60,000 pounds uh, tax. So a little bit of information can yeah. really hurt you. You've got to be able to understand the big picture. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, a little bit can be quite dangerous. So the age of information is obviously good. It has its benefits, but still, there's, there's yeah, a, yeah. And and I think most people know that the the whole pension industry, the financial industry, there is a lot to take in, a lot to to understand. So yeah, it's to, complex. It is. Yeah, reaching out to people like yourself is obviously advantage. Keeps us in a, keeps us in a job. <laughs> <laughs> so just uh, as, as we come to the end of what has been a brilliant, you know, brilliant chat, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, what, what sort of uh, myths would you like to bust around the financial industry? Because in the last, since 2006, I'm sure you've seen quite a dramatic change in, in how it's evolved. Perhaps maybe you'd actually like to share a bit about that before we, before we go to the myth busting. What, what have you seen change over the last sort of, um, you know, 10, 10 to 15 years? And, and where do you think the industry is heading? I think there's been a, a a big increase in quality in terms of um, who are who's involved in advice and financial planning. I mm-hmm. think um, I think there's still quite a long way to go personally in terms of really 
taking us up to the next level. I like to, to call it a profession because that's what I want it to be. I want it to, right. to be, be a profession. I'd like us to be um, seen and respected and understood in the same as my mum and dad were, you know, as, as, as uh, accountants and chartered accountants and solicitors. Yeah. Um, but I think there's, there's further um, growth and quality that needs to come. But it feels like that's coming. I'm involved. There's a firm called Next Gen Planners, which is an awesome network. Um, yeah. I'd advise any young person to uh, who's in, interested in financial planning, and not just young, any person who's truly passionate about the industry and, and profession and really wants to kind of take it forward to get involved with them. But they, when I look at who's involved there and who I'm surrounded by and my peers and the ideas and the way they collaborate, that to me just gives me a, a huge amount of confidence about mm-hmm. what's coming for the future. You know, I've got two young guys here, um, young guys, the 30 and 31, but, you know, they'll be... Young short. to me and you, young it's, to well, you and I. This, this is it, you know, <laughs> I still feel like I'm young. So, uh, so you know, they are, they're, they're coming through and uh, we chart financial planners will be absolutely brilliant. And, you know, a few years back, they would have been unheard of, you know, in, in the financial planning. And now there's there's more... Of, of that age group coming through who've yeah. got experience who've got qualifications who are doing things the right way um and more firms like ours who are really pushing financial planning forward um yeah. so i'm really i'm really excited about the future and i think um i think it's 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 just only going to get better as long as the services continue and and hopefully as long as kind of the fca don't don't beat us down too much yeah 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 so well I've really enjoyed this. I mean, I can Great. tell your passion. You, you absolutely love it. It's, it's fantastic to see as well. So thank you. Uh, where can the audience connect with you, Dominic? Where can they follow you? Where can they learn more about Beckett and, and, and get in touch with you for a, for a review, a pension review, a financial plan? Yeah, so we, we've got a, we've got a brand new shiny website. So go check us out at uh, www.beckettsfs.co.uk. Um, we're on, you know, Facebook and um, and Instagram and Twitter um, and LinkedIn. I think for me personally, um, LinkedIn's a, a good initial approach. Yeah, but okay. Also, um, my email address. Do so you want to put my email address in? Kind of. Any yeah, show I, will, notes? I will put all the links in the show notes as well. All your social media platforms there as well, so people can be able to follow yeah. you and connect with you and just by reading the show notes below awesome yeah yeah feel free anyone can can reach out and, and send an email over we love kind of like i say talking to people about the the profession and, and if anyone's got any questions always happy to help yeah cheers dominic thanks for your time really appreciate the chat it's been good good first one done thanks a lot, first mate. one brilliant <laughs> it's buddy brilliant I hope you enjoyed the video and if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you don't have to stop there either. We have more videos on the screen for you and lots more insightful content on our channel and at our website, fundyourretirement.com. I want to thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.